Okay, so we're back with part two, and um, we'll go straight into Ephesians chapter six. And then, of course, the topic is um, which side are we on, or are you on? Yeah, whose side are you on? Are you on Jesus' side, or, or are you on the devil's side? Yeah, I, you know, by just looking at that, Alfred, um, we know that um, by just asking individuals, Whose side are you on? It is saying there are two sides, right? One side has a uh, commandment. The other side is just everything goes. And one side is narrow. One side has discipline. One the side has forsaken everything from the other side. So it's like we were all on the side of satan we were born yeah. into well, one, sin yeah. and one side has denied itself and the other side says no i want to be even above god i love myself i'm interested in me the so, i the i so that's what the flesh does the flesh love itself the flesh interested in its uh you know the things that make it feels good it interested in uh not to uh, lose anything. It wants to develop itself. It wants to be the self-sufficient, the self, um, you know, no self-denial. But if you notice the side that God is saying we must have, he said, if any man should come to come after me, he must deny himself. So isn't it true that Jesus Christ actually um, uh, uh, modeled the way he signed? Yeah. should be because he came he denied himself as the son he's the son of god so he came down a little bit lower than the angels he he, he stripped himself of his glory he came down just to save us it's kind of like you you going to a, um you go into a pig's pen mm. and you wanted to save some a human being that is eating out of the pig house and everything now you have your white robe, you are you have your crown, and you are so you're shining like the sun, you're beautiful, and you can't go in there with your white robe, but what you do, you take off your robe, you take off the crown, you fold up your sleeve, your shirt sleeve, and you you, you might have fold up your your, your your trousers and you 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 go in and you mingle with it and you try to take it out and of course you are now taking on this guy's mess you take it onto yourself and you pull him out and you said i am now going to wash you with myself i'm going to wash you with the word so that's what jesus did jesus came down so low in the filth of our sins and said i am going to change you and when I change you, so the Father now is not looking at you. He's looking at the Son and said, Now, I take your sin. I am taking away the sins of the world. So he come in our mess to take the sin of the world. And then now he said, So that you don't continue in it, I'm going to put myself in you. Do you want that? What if that man decides that he's going to go back in that mess what will make him want to go back in that mess after all of that uh experience that jesus had take off his robe go in and take him out and now put in the word in his heart why would make him that man want to go back into that mess now to be a part of it well i'll just read to confirm what you're saying i'm from philippians um, chapter 2 um Verse 6, verse 5, it said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So, you know, Jesus came here, became like us like you said he emptied out himself he poured mm. out himself and he died even the death of the cross to redeem us to save us to change us so i don't think it's too much of us to, uh, to look at 
ourselves and deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow after Jesus. So isn't it the same thing that if we do not deny ourselves, others will not be able to be saved? Well, because because now that God has washed us, he's saying, follow me. Because yeah, I mean, just he deny himself, well, he take up the, he, I, he, you know, he, I believe he take up the cross. That and, the purpose of our lives as Christians is that Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And then he talks about a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. But before that, he said, you know, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt of loft is savour, where shall it be salted? It is worthless. It is good for nothing. So God has called us for a purpose. Mm. He's called us for a reason. Um, when you have light, he says, a man does not light a candle and put it under a bushel. You know, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So, yeah. yes, you know, Jesus is working through us to save men and women. He's working through us to bring people to his kingdom. Because he said, he that is not for me is against me. And he that is not gathering is scattering. And if you are with Jesus, you are gathering into the kingdom of God. That's right. So, yeah, you will be saving the souls of men by telling them about Jesus. And by living a lifestyle. By letting your light so shine. So, we know that as we were, as we started to say... Mm. Um, Whose side are you, are you on? on? So, and, and, and the responsibility that actually comes with that. Of course. There is a responsibility that comes with the side that you're on. Don't think that... And You see, because we were born into sin, it's easy to relax. Because, you know, when Satan said, Oh, men, is, uh, men don't feel like they have any responsibility. Men... Uh, you're born as apes, you're, you're a monkey, you know, you're born from, you, you know, and that's what evolution teaches, and mm. which, which, which put away the, the accountability for your soul. So it just says you're a mistake, you're an accident, you're a fluke. Yes. You're a fluke. You know, it just happened this way. It's not because you, God bang. created yeah. you. It's not because God... There is As a father purpose. looked at you and said, I'm going to make you in my own image and likeness. Somebody just said, you're just an accident. You're just a, you, you, there's no purpose why you're <laughs> here. You're <laughs> just an accident and, and all <laughs> of that. So um, if Satan could say that to people and many people, oh, many people believe that they are from the apes, which I just cannot fathom. That is ridiculous. <laughs> but, well, I'll just say this because uh, I just read it as what Jesus said. He said, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. So he's saying you are actually something. You're actually, you, there is good, there's purpose, there's in, purpose in you. He said you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So, um, we have a responsibility of course, to, to, shine. Tend, to tend the garden of our souls. Yes. We have a responsibility to be um, children of God, to obey the truth and not allow the filth of satan to overtake us but you know what yes. you know what i believe i believe that um the mind and many times i talk about this the mind of man is set to destroy him and the word of god can undo that time bomb. Because I totally agree with you because, yeah. you know, when we talk about Ephesians um, and before, I only read out, put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But if I read that section, we can look at the whole armour of God and the way in which a person who says they're in Jesus Christ and in God should be walking because this whole, I mean, the whole purpose of the armour is to protect you from being killed, from being harmed, from being destroyed. And if you are a, a, a person who is under the influence and control of God, you can reach out to others. 
Yeah. So when you look, I know you're gonna read it in a moment. Because it's but, but but when you look at someone's mind, Alfred. Yeah. Because you look, you look, you look at a person, an individual, yes. and you you don't know what is in that head. No, you that's You don't why, know what is actually going no, on. Because that's why a part of the armor of God is the helmet of salvation. Of salvation. That's what I'm saying. Once yes. we once we look at the armor of God, you will actually see that your head needs that protection. Go so ahead and I would read it, yeah. and we can just. You know, we can we look and look at it. It says, verse um, 10 of, of chapter 6 of Ephesians. And obviously, as we always say, please read um, each chapter, each book. Just get into the word of God for yourself. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And just say that again. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So initially, Paul is saying, the final thing he's saying to us is to be strong. Yeah, because the whole point is saying to them to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So now... Strength is vital for a soldier. Yes. A soldier need to exercise. And we know that with the body, if you do not exercise and keep your bone and your body really fit, you can't send a skinny, unfit, unwell person on the army in, into battlefield. That person need to develop mentally and that person need to develop physically with strength to be able to combat the different elements that are around them. Yeah. So the main thing is be strong. In the Lord. How, how, how can someone actually be strong in the Lord, Alfred? Just try to elaborate on that well, a little bit. Well, I think that true strength in God's sight starts with repentance. So repentance and then... Because it's the word of God. So repentance and praying and reading the word of God. Because the repentance... Is about the fact that you need to be changed. That's right. Something has to happen to you. You, And it's not because something spectacular must happen. Or something miraculous in the sense of your expectation. Mm, mm. Repentance is you crying out to God. Is you speaking to the Father. Is you acknowledging your sin. Is you recognising that you need a change of heart. That you yeah. need a change of mind. That you need to change. That you can't continue in your way any longer why do we need to change because if you don't hate your sin you don't hate your unrighteousness if you if you think that your own life is just okay and it's all right and it's acceptable you will not be strong in the lord and in the power of his might because so what about people who are saying that nothing is wrong with me i am i am fine can't you see i have a good paying job my children are well why do you think that I need any change? Mm. You see, the difficulty for you is that if you can understand that Jesus Christ was the, was God, and the Bible declares that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, but even Him, Jesus Christ, came here, had to empty Himself and become a man, and actually walk in righteousness. He didn't just say, listen, I'm the word of God, and that's it, I'm, everything's fine with me. You know, he said, actually, I'm going to law, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the word of God. 
I'm going to walk in righteousness. I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm going to live my life. And in the temptation, in the wilderness, in the desert, the devil didn't just come to Jesus and say, oh, well, you know, I guess you're the word of God. So what can I do? He tried to tempt him. But Jesus said, it is written. So isn't it, Jesus used the word so, of God. So isn't it true that we are on Satan's territory? And because he controls the world and the mind of men, because we were obviously born into sin. We were born. Yes, he is the fathers of life. And the thing about it is that why Satan is, he's a father of lies. He's hmm. deception. He wouldn't so abide in the truth. He, he, there's no truth. And he has children that he deceives. So to undo his work is to bring truth to the people that he deceived. Because when you deceive... Because well, yes. John says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So, you know, God sent Jesus like us so he could redeem us from the power of sin. So the power of sin is um, obviously when we are... So what I'm trying to say is that Satan deceived men into thinking that I've got a good life. I've got a good Everything's life. Everything's going the way I want yeah. it to. You know, I'm not doing anything really wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to do what I think is right. Yeah. Why, why are you telling me I'm not? But the truth is, you have to deny yourself. You have to give up all of what you so are. So the reality is to deny that self. And denying yourself, Alfred, it actually means denying everything about you. Like your well, mind, your... Well, your, your imagination. Job, when you say be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, it means that you're giving up your own strength. Your own might. And yes. you're giving up your own might and you're saying, I'm going to trust God. And trusting God could mean that you lose your own life. That's trusting right. Trusting God could mean that you don't have anything. Trusting God could mean that you don't get what you well, want. Well, isn't it true when you that want, we are dying we anyway? Aren't we dying anyway? It's just that we're doing it slowly. I mean, I guess, Raymond, most people don't realise that from the moment they're conceived and they are dying. they they come out of their, their mother's womb even when they're being conceived that every breath that you take you're it's dying another, it's another death you, you know every time you breathe in oxygen and you think you're getting fresh air you're just dying you know you're you 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 you're sentenced to death your flesh cannot stand before God it, so it's just a grace of God that give us this time even though it's slow death yes for us to have another chance to well, repent well I think what people fail to realize. Um, hold on, just yes, one more. Let me just say this because I believe this is really important because yeah. if the fact is that while we um, we were born into sin and um, there's nothing that I do to change it. There's nothing I can do to change it. My, I, it's something that I inherited. Sin. Yes. Every, every one of our children, everybody around us inherits sin. Mm. Now, and as you're born, you started to inhale and you're dying. And that is true, we're dying. But the, the grace of God is this, Alfred, is that while we, our parents and our inheritance from Adam comes straight down, the whole world is under this curse. You're born, you die. Isn't that so sad? And of because of the sadness of it, God loves us so much. Even though we should perish, the world should perish. The world is under a curse. But God looked at us and said, mm, I'm going to send my son. And I'm going to give them a time. It's not yes. going to be long. It's going to be three score and, 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 and ten. If that. If it's, if it's that in strength. It's going to be 80 or 70 years or 50 mm. years. I'm going to give them a, a time to see what they're made up of. Will those people seek me? Seek me. Will they... Come, because obviously they have been deceived. And because of that deception that happened through Adam and Eve, um, they did not really understand. No. They did not have that understanding of the truth. Mm. And so because of that lack of understanding, they actually ate that which I tell them not to. Now, I am going to look back into eternity and I'm going to give them a chance, another chance, to see who will read my word now because I'm going to send my word as I said and he's going to come into flesh mm. and he's going to dwell among us and we, we're going to bring him an easy gift that I'm sending to the world and as I send this gift Christ the word of God to the world I'm going to see who will pay attention mm. who will consider 
who will realize that they are dying. But there are two things here. The world, Jesus came into the world to save the world. The world reject him. And it's another level of deception when we reject Jesus because the world is saying, we don't need you, Jesus. Who are you? It's, like, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when someone is dying mm. and you're, you went there to help that person. You tell them, yes, the house is coming down. It's on the fire. And you're saying, will you please just jump? I want to save you. The, the fire is coming through the window in your bedroom. You are in one little corner. You can, can you not feel the heat behind you? You said, no, I can't. I can't. I can't. And you said, jump. 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 And you said, no, I can't. I, I, I can't. I know I'm going to die, but, you know, I will be saved if I die. And he said, jump. And the person die. Isn't that sad? Because very that was the very, the very reason mm. you come out of the front of the house is to say, jump. And this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, jump. He's saying, believe. He's saying, Turn away from that sinful nature that is in you that is about to kill you for eternity. I came so you don't have to die. And Jesus know what hell is all about. Jesus talk about hell more than any writer in the Bible. He talk about hell because he knows what hell is about. He's saying, don't go there. Don't go there. And God in his mercy, it, I, I must, yes, I must say, it takes for God to send his son, Alfred. To strip himself of his glory and to come down to earth to save man. It must be something horrible that man is facing in the spiritual. Well definitely, I mean this whole purpose of putting on the whole armour of God. That he may be able to stand against the wiles of them. Because he said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not about people. He's saying but we are wrestling against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And he's saying, because of all of that, right? Because sometimes people only get caught up in all of those things. They get caught up in the, against the powers and the darkness and the principalities. And the, he says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So isn't it true that the responsibility that Paul is conveying to us yeah. is this. Take on. Um, yes. Put on. And it's, it's just something that you must do. But you I, have to do it. What, I, what, I, what, what is coming across um, to me and what had come across to me over the years being in church and, mm. you know, understanding about Christianity is that. People have, have been so deceived to the level that they think that, you know, I don't need to do this. Because it's, it's almost like people feel like they have a right to be saved and they have been saved and they are on their way even though the sinful nature is saying, no, you're not. Does not the heart understand its own heart? Does, don't, don't you think your heart know? Every individual know whether or not sin is destroying them. Fear is controlling you. Self-confidence self is killing you. And, and so, so, so what I'm trying to say, do we not know? Do we not understand that, that we need to do something? It's like, it's, it's almost like the will and oh. This is what happened. Your will is taken away from you. Because that's when you're in slavery, you know. When your will is taken away. So isn't it the same thing the devil secretly and deceiving do, deceivingly does? He take away the will of mankind. Let them feel like, I don't need to do anything. He's lying to them. My will is fine for me. I, I am, I'm okay. I don't need to do that. Jesus did it already. No, the reason you have a will is that you need to use that will and to put on the, your, the old armor of God with your will. Amen. And so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a will then, is it? Well, what would happen is, of course, it would mean that you're a robot. It would mean that you are uh, incapable of doing anything unless it's being downloaded into you. 
But God gives you his word so that you can abide in him, so you can obey him, so you can trust him, so you can, with your own reasoning, look at the scripture, look at the word of God and come to the conclusion that God is great and greatly to be praised and that you can serve him and that you can live for him. And this is why he's saying to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and therefore take unto you the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. The purpose of the armour of God is so that you can stand in the evil day. It's not, it is God is saying, look, I'm not just controlling you. I'm not just forcing you. I'm not just making you. I'm actually telling you, if you want to be able to stand, if you want to be able to actually withstand in the evil day of the arch deceiver, if you want to be able to escape from the liar, if you want to be able to escape from the murderer, which is the devil, which is Satan, which is Lucifer, which is the old serpent, if you want to be able to withstand in the evil day, you've got to take on the whole armour of God. This is something that you're going to need to do in order for you to stand. The idea of stand, therefore, is why is it that everybody seems to be falling at the moment? Falling into sin, falling into lies, falling into confusion, falling into problems, falling into every trap and snare that is set for them. You know, what has happened? Is it that you have forgotten? Is it that you have thought that, you know, it's not going to affect you? Is it that you think that, you know, it won't happen to me? Well, it's already happened to you. It's already drawn you down. It's already taken you because that's the, the wiles of the devil, the, the, the attack and the fiery darts of the wicked are coming your way. They're coming your way. You're not going to be able to do anything unless you've got the whole armour of God on you. And I mean, I was just saying that the purpose of God giving us the armour of God is so that we can stand. That's right, because you have to have that, that armour, that armour to be able to prevent you well, from, well, from all the different elements that well, are around you that are sinful. Because we talk about how do we keep you know, how can we keep the word of God? How can we be kept by the power of God? And of course he says, having your loins go about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. When I found out that, you see, truth is the most important thing that we need. Because, you know, the Roman belt, everything hangs on the belt of the Roman guard, um, soldier. And everything, all the weapon, the um, there are... The, 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 their garment, everything, the, the breastplate, everything is actually attached to the belt. So if there is, and that is saying, if we don't have truth, the belt of truth, everything is slack. You see, if you don't stand for anything, you will, for something, you'll fall for anything. And if you don't have truth, you see... Well, I think Jesus said to them in John 8, you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. So, I think that, you know, because we talked before about, you know, do we know? Mm. Do we know what God wants? Do we know mm. what God is saying? Do we mm. know the truth? Yeah. You know, and if we know that truth, are we going to, are we going to live it? Are we going to abide in it? Are we going to walk in it? Or are we going to, the truth that we know, are we going to reject it? And go the other way and still try to say, I love you, Jesus. So, you see, like the tongues and the mouths are saying those things, but the heart is far away. Well, and you said that everything hangs on, you know, the, the, the breast, the, the, the belt. The, if the belt, if the truth is gone, everything then, gone, then basically that person is going to be naked. That's right. And poor and blind in the sense that we're talking spiritually. Yeah. I. Do you see yourself as clothed in the armour of God or are you naked with the lies of the devil? Are you actually living the life of Christ mm. or is Christ living the life um, that he has called? Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Are, is that your life mm. or is it the devil is in control of you? Are you on the conveyor belt of life? Are you out of control? 
are you are the things that you're doing the things that God has said not to do okay let me do you a, can't do anything about let me it. do an application to that listen you wake up in the morning right what is who is leading you you get off off your bed is it God that directs you to turn on the television or to um, think about work to think about other things these things are um, normal people work you have to find food to eat but has the Holy Spirit um, ever you know during your daily routine speak to you and said hold on a moment Alfred spend some time in the presence of God have you ever heard that voice that tells you, get into the scripture. You don't have to be long, but start developing, getting into the scripture. Read, read the book. Do you get dreams and visions of the word of God? Has God spoken to your word or to your heart throughout the day? He come to you, has he come to you and tell you, um, just trouble your heart a bit and said, you are not right with me. There is something you, you may you need to say forgiveness. You need to speak to somebody. You still have unforgiveness. You still have covetousness in your heart. That thought you had wasn't good. Is the Holy Spirit reminding you? Because He is the one that brings these things to our remembrance. And He's the one that is telling us and is cleansing us. But are we obeying Him? Or are we just listening to another spirit that is saying, well, they are the first one who did it to me anyway. I can't do that. I, I need more money. I, I, I need to get this promotion at work. I, 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 I don't have time for heavenly things. I want to have a big house. I want to have a big car. I want all these things. Which one of those you think belong to God? Which of those voices you think belong to God? But to expose the devil, what he does, Alfred, he used the prosperity preacher man and he have him use the two scenarios I told you about. The other scenario which he says that I want money, I need a big house, that's a blessing, I want that. He tell you that that's the blessing that God wants for you. And he will never tell you, spend time in the presence of the Lord. Spend time and let his word come in you. Let his word drive out the sinful thoughts and the lies that has built a garrison in your minds and your em emotion. Let them drive you out. And, 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 and when you are going, let the Holy Spirit lead you. Because the word said, as many that are led by the Spirit of of God they are the sons of God so if you wake up in the morning and God's Spirit is not leading you to the Bible or leading you to read the scriptures and to 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 practice them you are not the sons of God we need to understand that God is a spirit and so the devil is also a spirit and he's using his spirit to control our minds to do things you see you are we are just a body we're just a you know a, a temple that move around that goes around and 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 and, and 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 operate put into practice what the spirit tells us whether is the spirit of satan or the spirit of god we're just this 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 um what you call it the this ex we we execute we execute the word we execute what the, the spirit of Satan tells us. So he's telling us, say, go and lie. Go and covet. Go. This is a nice show on the television. Go and watch it. It has some, it has a little bit of nudity, but it won't harm you. But, you know, you need to relax, man. Go and, and watch it. You now go and do that. You are following the spirit of Satan. But on the other hand, the Holy Spirit is saying, why are you going to watch those? Raymond, don't do that. Be get, in, get into my word. Separate yourself, Separate from yourself it. Raymond. Get into the scripture. Read the scripture. Turn on the, 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 the scripture. Listen to Psalms or listen to Proverbs. Get my word in and build up. But no. You said, well, I hear what you're saying, Spirit. But I want to relax a bit. It's been a hard day. I have a lot. When I go to church, I just go to the altar, let them pray. But let me tell you something. If you 
Don't listen to the Holy Spirit that teach you and tell you to do what you need to do during your everyday life. Do you think that you're going to go to a church and somebody else is going to be more powerful than the Holy Spirit that is going to hear you and forgive you? Think again. That in itself is deception. So we need to forget about going to altar and praying on Sunday mornings and beginning to listen every single day to follow the leading of the Spirit of God. Because Jesus said, I go and I'm going to send you another a comforter. And he will abide with you forever. He will teach you. So we have the Holy Spirit here. And he's teaching us. We should obey him. Yeah, I mean, just looking at when he says, and your feet shoved with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that there is, you're being guided. You know, you're being led your feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's not something for you to sit back and do nothing. You should be moving. You know, you should be moving in God. Not just become stagnant and dry and dead. You should be walking with your feet shod with the preparation. That time where you talk about the Holy Spirit setting you aside. You're getting into the word. You're understanding that preparations for the gospel of peace must be with you. It's with you. It's not with someone else. It's not somebody else's due to your job. Your feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That, you know, you've got to have that within you. You've got to know that there is a war and that God is saying, go out and declare that the war is over. Man does not live to live in sin any longer. They don't need to be controlled by their desires anymore. They don't need to be rejected by God any longer. They can come to Jesus Christ. They can be free from their sin. Absolutely. And as I said, as you said, you know, the Spirit of God is there and He is right here. And you know what? He's not loud. He is talking to us every day. Every man knows good from evil. Of course, nobody can say they don't know. The thing about it, man uses emotion and try to fool himself and say, I want that. But the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart you, you can't and he it. tells you, you can't what have is it. right from what is wrong. You can't and do it. You know what, Alfred? I believe it's time for us as Christians to get back to our maker, get back to him and beginning to understand his truth and to understand that time is running out. And we, many have not really made peace with God yet. Well, I mean, we talked in the first part about without faith, it is impossible to please God. And really, as we're, what you're saying is connected to, above all, taking the shield of faith, mm. where you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The person is under attack. That's right. There is an attack being launched on your life. There is an attack being directed in your way if faith is not there if faith is not with you if you're not if you're not faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen then you're going to be taken in by what you do see That's you're right. going to believe that oh all of i've done all my accomplishments all of what i've achieved yes and before you know it you're in the you're in you're actually being destroyed by that wickedness. Okay. Let's do application again. Because the devil use sight, things tangible, yeah, because to fool many the, the people. The faith you're supposed to shield, get behind exactly. faith and be shielded from all this exactly. that's from, around you. From all these things that your 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 eyes can see. <laughs> And, of course, there are many things that our eyes can't see anywhere that mm. is more re real than what we see. But anyway. Well, okay, imagine you're on a battlefield, right? And there's somebody firing arrows at you. And you think, oh, let me just put my shield aside so I can have a look at these arrows that are coming. You'd be dead. Oh, dear. Let me so, just see what kind of sword are you exactly, using there. Let exactly. me have a look at that. What kind of club are you using yes. there on me? Let me see. No, you've got to stay behind that shield. That shield of let faith it protect you. Let it needs to you. be there. You must not put it down because the day you do that, you're going to die. You're going to die. The day you eat from what you're not supposed to eat, you shall surely die. Mm. And you see what? This is what God wants us to do. Is to always 
put on the shield of faith. This is how, this is, you see, Alfred, this is our life for eternity. This is what this is the, yeah. this is what it is. This is what we're it, living for. This this is what we will be doing throughout eternity. So if if you don't like to do this, you're in the wrong on the wrong side. You you will not stop having to shield yourself away from Satan. You will not you will never stop having to have faith in God. You will never stop having to put on the whole armor. You will never stop having to put on the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and the helmet of salvation. The day you take this thing off, you will be destroyed by the demons of Satan and you will go to hell. So you see, people look at it and say, oh, I, I, I'm just tired. I can't. You, you can't stop being a soldier. Imagine you're, see, look, if you're in a battle, what kind of battle can you be in? And you just see somebody lying on the floor saying, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm tired. I've had enough of this. You'll be dead in no time. They'll just say, look, there's one lying down over there. Get him. The devil is not playing games. He's not wasting time. He's not thinking, <laughs> look, oh, he's down. Give him a breather. Give him a chance. The devil's like, deceive him. Deceive Lie him. to her. Kill him. Trap her. Kill him. Make her go off. Let her, get her off the field. Yeah. The less on there, the better. That's right. Yes, that's right. Kill him, and kill their families too. Kill everybody that they know. In fact, get them on our side. Let that person now become one of our soldiers. Yes. Let them now become a wicked. Let them start attacking and persecuting those that are seeking God in righteousness. And this is what is happening because the the heart of man has gone away from the Creator. And you know what? I see clear how man has fallen so far because they have moved from the solid rock. The solid rock. And I can just see clear, in application, when you're not having, if you're not on the word of God, you're a dead man. If you're not obeying the word of God, there's no hope for you. There's no hope for you. You, you only have hope in Christ. You only have hope in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Apart from the word of God, you are like dogs and sorcerers. You're no good. But you see, this is hard to register with people. People might make them feel like... Well, whose side are you on? You know, exactly. I mean, are you on the side of righteousness or are you on the side of unrighteousness? Because I look at things like taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And I think, do we take that... Do we really think about that? Have we really... Are our minds really protected by praying, God's salvation? Praying always yes. with all prayer and, and supplication. supplication. No, this is this is the key. Because you know? he's saying praying always yeah, with it's, it's, all prayer. Yes. We look at Jesus. Where was where you could find Jesus? Every time you miss him, he would be on the mountain praying. And, and he would be spending time Love with God. And while he was um, with everybody and many of them, after he tell them who he was, many people go away. But the Bible said Jesus went to the mountain yeah. and begin to pray. Mm. You see, I must say this to, to people. You are an individual. You are an individual. You are an individual. You are an individual. I said it four times because I want us to get it. You are an individual. Um, you think your own thoughts. If you get a cut, you feel it alone. You get a burn, you will feel it alone. In hell, not even the mother is going to be caring for the child. The child will get her pain alone. The mother will feel her pain alone. The, 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 the father will feel his pain alone. It's everybody to themselves in hell. No family is in hell. Everybody to themselves. Because the Bible said, father will be against son. You understand? So everybody will be against one another. There is hell. There is um, uh, um, chaos. You think you see chaos yet on earth? You wait. You wait. You wait until when the end of age comes. When the end of time comes. There will be father against son, mother against daughter. There will be 
every man for themselves. The day God takes his Holy Spirit out of this world and we leave it, you're going to see why Jesus was important. You're going to see why he said love one another. You're going to see what love was. You're going to see what patience was. You're going to see what peace was. You're going to see all the different things of God that we have neglected and thrown away and, 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 and said, we don't want that. We're gonna, you, you're going to see why marriage were important. You're going to see why we, need, we, should, we should be truthful and kind. You're going to see why, why the things that we break down, mm -hmm. we're going to see. And that's what people are going to look at when they inhale. They're going to see the structure of God, holiness, truth, righteousness. And they're going to see all of these things. And when they look, it's just chaos there. Well, you know, if you're out there today and you're thinking prayer is pointless... I don't see the results. I don't know what's happening. You know, I've prayed and it gets worse. I can assure you, if you wasn't praying, it really would be worse. <laughs> if you wasn't praying, it really would be bad. If it was, if you wasn't praying, there really wouldn't be result. And you're only going to understand this later. You're not going to understand this now. If you were to stop praying, if you were to stop seeking the face of God, you would see the kind of calamity that will come upon your life. Don't misunderstand or misinterpret the way in which God, as God, desires to answer your prayer, desires yeah. to work things out in your life. That's why you have to have the shield of faith so that you know that God is in control. And don't stop praying. Don't allow your job or allow anything that is, you know, is, is so vain to take you from that mill of pride don't 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 let you know anything stop you from praying you cannot live without praying pray always pray always just pray. Just in good times in bad times in Talk times when father. you don't understand pray the pray to the father because remember Ask him, mm. do, and, you know people do pray alfred but yeah I tell you what they pray for they pray amidst they money. pray. They, they ask money, for money and materials. They said, God, riches, give it to me. It's mine. Wealth, you know, give me back crazy. my blessing. They said, give me back my material things. That's not what prayer is all about. When you look at the prayer of Jesus and the prayer of Paul, do you see, ever see Jesus ask for money? Jesus said, well, when you pray, go in the closet, close the door, speak to the Father. Say, our Father who art in heaven, I hallowed you. You are great above all others. Hallowed, separate is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be your done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are praying and saying, Lord, bring heaven here in me your on will. earth. Let your, your will. will. Let your will be done. Do we really want God's will? And if we really see what God's will is, do we really want it? I tell you, you will never want God's will if you well, do not understand it. Well, check out your prayer life. Is it really about God's will or is your prayer life about your personal needs, your personal wants, your, you know, your, your things that you feel that you're entitled to? Or is your prayer about God's will, that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Is that what your prayer is about? And this is why people pray. They pray for money. They pray for material things. And I just say as we're closing that we need to restructure the, 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 what we are doing and know which side we are on. What Jesus does. What prayer he prayed. Right? What prayer Paul prayed. And compare that prayer to the religious false teachers today. They are coming before the altar. They are praying because they are sick. They have sick body. It's all about physical things they want. They want to get well. They don't really want salvation. I come here because I want to be healed. You know, I come here because I, you know, my house, my back is hurting me. My house, I mean, you can't, <laughs> your back is hurting you. Let it hurt you. Sometimes, you know, people forget that they're wrestling. It's not against the flesh and blood. It's not about your physical life it, this tense is breaking down anyway why are you worrying about you it? Know, your body is dying you know it's under the sentence of god don't listen to these preachers and teachers who are saying to you no your body's going to be healthy you're never going to grow old you're never going to get gray hair you're never going to get wrinkles your body's never going to get your body cannot enter into heaven it's dying it's your soul it is your spirit that god is trying to 
recreate and transform into the image and likeness of his son Jesus Christ. We get so bad. hung up on our physical bodies that you forget your body is dying. It's flesh. It can't enter into heaven. It's flesh and blood shall not enter the kingdom of, of God. Death of God is upon you. You can't survive. You've got to get changed. Your soul must be cleansed. The only thing that will help you that will never die. And that's the word of God. Amen. And what is it that you have in you that will not die? Everything is dying. What is it that is around you that will never die? Everything that you spend your time with is burning up. It's going. Nothing lasts forever. But I tell you what will never die. And if you're wise and you're a good investor, you would invest into that. Ladies, gentlemen, boy, girl, what never die is the word of God. Be wise and bank as much as you can. Fill up that jar of your heart until it overflow with God's word. That's when you are wealthy. That's when you are rich. That's when the blessing of Abraham in Christ Jesus is on you. When, you're, when you are nothing lacking. When the word of God is strong in you. That's when you are rich. It's not when you have material things. Houses on a hill and cattle and all these things. All of those is going to die. They're going. Look at, look at the kings and the, the priests. Look, look at the Egyptians. Look, they, they, they have boats and they have all these things. They bury them with it. No English... Um, men, they go and dig it up and have it in the museums. So, what are you saying? They think that they're going to live. They build the pyramid and think that, oh, they're going to live Seven forever. wonder the world. I know. We look at them and say how stupid they are today. Don't let the generation in many years look at you and say, oh, you have all these, these things that they love and all these houses. And say how stupid you are. You invest your money and your time in bricks and stone and mortar. Don't be silly. Invest your time, your energy in that which cannot die. And Jesus said, I, He that if you believe in me, you will never die. Jesus proved it. They put him to the death. They, they, they killed the physical part of him and they, they think they can keep the word of God down. Three days, he rolled that stone away and he said, It is I. They look, look at the body. Look at my hands. I raise up myself. I die and now I am alive. So when you, when this carcass die, God's word that you love and that you keep in this temple while you're on earth, it will come and save you like how it saved Rahab and her family. And this is what God wants to do with us. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with you, dear br um, brothers and sisters, invest properly. I mean, Invest in the word of God. I mean, obviously, just before we pray, I'm just going to read from Revelation chapter 1, verse um, um, 17 and 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. The Lord. Amen. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And I'm just saying that to the say, of God. Jesus keys. Christ has the keys of hell and of death. And he's the one who will put you in. And he's the one that can take you out. He's in charge over there. So whose side are you on? If you're in hell, which you, many people are in, who's Jesus can... On? Open up that door and take you out of the burning and he can save your soul. So, Father, I just want to thank you for your word. I just thank you for your Holy Spirit that gives us this revelation of your word. I pray, Father, God, that you will just have mercy. You have the key, O oh God, of hell and death. And as we send out these videos on YouTube, I pray, God, that your people, people will see and people will understand and they will be enlightened. They will, they will see the word of God and they will change. They will forsake the prosperity preaching. They will not be conned by Satan anymore to believe that they are monkeys and they come from apes. And they, they, they will not believe the deception of the devil anymore, Lord. I pray, God, that you will just, just raise up a righteous warfare in mankind, in the government, in these people 
who are leading people, Lord, that they are doing the wrong things. And many people, oh God, are like children in the street, just obeying what other people are doing. Help people to be an individual, Lord. Help them to, to, to stand up on their two feet and to say, I will serve the Lord. I will, I will keep that which cannot die in me. Help them to love your word with all their heart and to serve you, Lord, because only you will never die. Everything else that we waste our time is, is a dis distraction and will die and will perish. But you, Lord, you reign forever. Keep us as the apple of your eye and hide us under the shadow of your wings. We pray in Jesus' name. Lord, I just want to pray that for any of us, including ourselves, listening, Lord, that we would truly want to know and understand and be on your side. That we would want to serve you, we'd want to live for you, we'd want to walk in your footsteps. We'd want to listen and obey your teachings and your sayings and that we would walk Jesus upright in you. Lord, it, the time is far spent, Lord. The, the night is passing. It's, it's coming to the point, Lord, where we're living in a world where no one seems to want to know you, to live for you, to serve you, to trust you. Because we all want to do our own thing and go our own way. But Jesus, for those listening, for those hearing, for those who want to abide in you, for those who want to let your word be in them, for those who want to be changed and sanctified and live for you, Jesus, we encourage them, Lord, that they would stand on the authority of your word, that we would live for you, Lord Jesus, that we would not think or feel alone, but that we would know that you are with us. In fact, your name, Emmanuel, means God with us. God with us. So let's be with you, Lord, in all we do and say and do and think and feel. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would continue to give us wisdom, to seek your face, to get into your word, to listen to your teachings, to understand your sayings. And as the scripture said, if you love me, keep my commandments and you're going to come and be with us. So, Father, I pray that we would love you and that we can keep your commandments in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.